Hello again, everyone. Sorry, I may shake you here a second. I forgot to turn my light on there. Okay, so I have been dying to play with my solar color liquid crystal stuff again, but I wanted to find a way to use it with alcohol ink. And so, you know, I had an idea in mind, so I'm gonna try that today. Uh, this will be step one. I'm just going, this is a, um, eight inch Nara synthetic art paper, just an eight inch round from them, eight inch circle that I'll be using today. And I haven't really decided on my colors yet. I have some jacquard, some of the pinata colors here. I've got passion purple, Baja blue and sapphire blue. But then I also set out some stream some purple, I can't even see what it says, purple twilight, <laughs> um, some indigo and wild plum. I, Cause I just, I haven't decided. I want dark colors because I want it, to, in order for the liquid crystal to show up, it's supposed to be on black, but we're gonna try some other colors and see if it works because why not? If you don't experiment, you never figure anything out. So all I'm gonna do is, you know, I'm gonna cover these, this, uh, in these colors or some variation of them and let it dry. And then I think what I'm gonna do is try using my airbrush and just putting several layers of liquid crystal over top of the whole thing. So I do want to leave, I'm also going to use my pinata brass that's in this. And I do want to leave this kind of um, dark. So I'm going to try not to use too awful much alcohol in it uh, just to make sure that, you know, I have a good chance of the color showing up that's in the liquid crystal. And I don't know what it's going to do to those colors in the liquid crystal being on top of these. But this passion purple is a pretty intense color, so that's one reason I wanted to use it. Oh, what am I doing? Don't need three drops of that. I disconnected my brain momentarily. So I'm just gonna be covering the entire surface of this. I'm not gonna leave any white on it this time. Um, because I know that the liquid crystal will not show up on white, so I'm not even going to leave any white on this. So, I hope that you all can hear me okay. I was looking down at the time. I try to look up or speak really loudly when I have the dryer on, but, uh, I wasn't really paying real good attention that time. Let's try a little less of this. I don't want to have so much brass in it that you can't see the color change because of the brass, too. So I'm spreading it out, but I'm still, you know, trying to keep it fairly condensed, you know? I don't want to spread it. Oops. Got one away from me there. I don't want to spread it out too much. Because if I keep spreading it, you know, the, the more I spread it, the less color, the less dark it's going to be. And I do think they're probably going to have to be pretty dark to show up on the... Um, or for the liquid crystal to show up on it. So I, that's why I did want to try and keep that fairly dark. Let's get that open. I haven't used this color in a while. This is the sapphire blue, really pretty color. I don't know why I haven't pulled it out and used it recently. Putting that there so I could try and get that little arc of ink that went 
my got away from me. I did not get that blended good. Add a little more alcohol there. Oh well. And see, I did not get that blended good at all. But what I'll do, instead of washing out too much of these colors, what I'll do is as I go in with some of the other colors, I'll try to make a pass through there somewhere with it. And I'm just kind of skipping around here right now, putting it hither and yon. <laughs> How many of you know that saying, hither and yon? It's hard for me to not put a little too much alcohol down here. I'm, you know, I'm getting more alcohol than I need or than I want right now because I'm just too used to this. Normally, if I put down that much ink, I'm gonna put down a lot of alcohol. And uh, uh, it's just habit. It's hard to, you know, change that. What's well, almost like muscle memory for me. So, you all can see, if you haven't used, if you don't know the difference between the Pinata inks by Jacquard and the Ranger Tim Holtz inks, I don't know if you all can see it or not, but do you see how thick the Pinata inks are more pigmented than the Ranger inks are? Uh, it takes much less of these inks to get something to show up than it does of the Ranger. I seriously could take one or two drops of the Pinata inks and do an entire painting with it. A, a <laughs> decent sized one at that. I'm thinking I'm probably going to probably going to wish I had put stream down there, but this is a really pretty color too. These are actually coming out a little bit thicker than I wanted them to, but I'm gonna just keep going with it. There's really no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting these colors down. I'm just trying to mix them up a little bit so that they don't all end up in the same place. The wild plum, I've debated on it because I just wasn't sure if it was going to be dark enough to show up the uh, the colors 
with the liquid crystal, but I'm gonna put some in here just because I think it's gonna look really good. If this turns out you know, halfway decent looking, what I'll do is I have some eight inch wooden rounds and I'll be, um, I'll mount this on one of the eight inch wooden rounds, uh, you know, for display, for hanging, whatever, but I'll mount it and then resin it after that. Gotta get a little of the stream in there. I love this color, I think it's so pretty. Actually, then we'll put a little more plum in first. Put some right in there, just seems like a good spot for it. So I've just been dying to do something like this you know, for the liquid crystal. Just couldn't ever decide which colors to use. And so, um, I have to say thank you to one of you all who was talking about wanting to try it on purple. And as soon as I heard that, or read that, I was like, oh yeah, yep, I know which colors I wanna do now. Cause I knew I had these really nice jewel tone colors. So, even if the, uh, the liquid crystal doesn't work real good on it, hopefully it'll still be a really pretty painting. Didn't really put enough. I whip. Wrong one. Lost one. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I got to try and get a little of this in here, but still leave room for some stream because I did want a little more of the passion purple over here. Where I do, I'm not getting quite enough alcohol on it. It's not wanting to blend as much as I want it to, but it's all right. Sometimes you just got to deal with what you got. And I don't know if you noticed, but look at the, can you see how much less of the brass is showing up on these blues. And if you'll notice, they're also the thickest ones. They're leaving the heaviest lines and thickness. 
So that's your, the brass, it's mixing with them more than uh, the purple and the plum. And that's, I don't know, maybe one of you all is a chemist and, and knows why that would be, because I don't. You would kind of think the heavier your ink is, excuse me, the heavier your ink is, the better the brass would float. But that's actually not the case. So, I don't know. Do you not know? I'll show you all at the end. I uh, don't know what gets into me sometimes, why I sort of waste some of the stuff I do, but I'll show you what I did earlier today, just playing around with the liquid crystal, just because I thought it might be fun and cool uh, for one of the kids to have, which means I'll probably have to do another one or there'll be a fight. But I'll show you when I get done with this. love the way that stream looks in there. That's so pretty. This is, this color combination, I mean, if somebody asked me my favorite color, these, <laughs> all together. <laughs> this is my favorite color. I love the plums and purples and the, the teals and these jewel tones. Uh, although, I don't know, my favorite color is just every color but not any one color. I love combinations of colors together, even pastels, but I just think that these jewel tones are crazy beautiful. Got away from me. I have to wipe out all my plum there by accident. So doing this is actually easier when you're, you start at one side and work to the other, because then when you get small spaces like that, it gets a little trickier to um, get your colors blended and make them look right, which is actually what I'm getting ready to try to fix right here, because I don't want that much of a separation. So I'm just using some of the brass and some alcohol to see if I can soften that little hard edge up right there. I don't know if you all could see it really good before, but it, it looks better now. That did really help soften that edge up. I may have to go back over this with some brass because it ate it all. It just has an odd look to me there where there's not enough, but I'm going to go ahead and try and finish up the rest of it first, and then I'll decide, you know, if and where I want to add any more in. That may be a little more brass than I wanted. Just, I'm so excited to see what this is gonna look like. It's gonna drive me crazy because I gotta wait to make sure all this is dry. I'm actually gonna have to wait probably until tomorrow before I put on any of the, uh, actually, I'm probably gonna have to wait longer than that. I'm out of the low PSI because I've sprayed it on everything I could find. Um, so, I may have to wait because I did order a little bit more. Another bottle of it. Alright, so I am going to put a little more brass 
in here because I think you all can see how non reflective it is that there's just a chunk it's not just that there's a tiny spot without much brass it's like a big chunk right there and that will be one of those things that you know once I've seen it I can't unsee it and that's all I'm going to see so I'm gonna see what I can do about it Plus, I have the added benefit of mixing or blending that a little more. I have sort of a hard line right there. Although I do down here, too. I may have to fix that a little because that will bug me, too. The, the thing to be careful of when you're doing things like this is not losing all of one of your colors. You know, you want to be careful that you don't blend things so much that you can't even see your colors that you wanted in there anymore. I'm trying not to use too much alcohol. I don't want a big spread with that. See, I see a couple of other little spots that are just irking me. That's a good word. Irking me. Ask the girls. They know the meaning of that word. <laughs> you are irking me. That's, that's what I'm doing right now is just fixing a couple more little places that are just a little too shiny and just ink without any sort of, of the metallic kind of sheen that I want on it. And, you know, be careful when you're, you know, fixing things because I have fixed paintings to death before. I mean, literally had a really decent painting and then just couldn't leave it alone and it just ended up awful. So, just be cautious not to overfix when you start doing that. And remember that a lot of times the things that you see, nobody else is going to see. Which is probably the case with this, but, oh well. Because I'm experimenting anyway, I might as well try and do it good. Alright, so I'm going to leave it like this. And I'm going to let it dry overnight just to make sure all the, the brass is dry and this thicker ink is dry because it does take it a little longer. It'll stay tacky, um, usually at least for a few hours and sometimes for a day or two. But I will be back with you all once I am positive that this is completely dry and once my low PSI liquid crystal comes in and we'll get this thing covered with it and see what happens. Oh, wait, before I go, I'll show you real quick if I can. This, y'all think I'm weird. All right, so this is a rock that one of the girls found outside. It would have been perfect to have that little chunk out of it in the back, but let me see. It's fairly warm in here, so it's already um, colored some. Let me see if I can. Yeah. I think the rock is already just too warm to um, 
to change much, but darn it, because I really wanted to show you all that with the fingerprints and whatnot in it. But, all right, so maybe that'll be cool enough um, to show you another time. I'm trying to put this on cool, but as any of you who have this one know, it's not entirely cool, so it's not really helping much. But anyway, yeah, so there's what I wasted. Well, this wasn't the low PSI, but I had some other that I put on with a brush just to see what it would do on a rock. Yes, that was me wasting us. That's, that's an expensive little uh, landscape rock right there now. <laughs> so, all right, well, I'm gonna let this dry and wait on my liquid crystal to come in and I will be back with you all very shortly for you, but probably a day or two for me. Okay, everything is dry now and I have got some uh, of the liquid crystal loaded in my little airbrush here, which I'm hoping the battery will last on it because I forgot to plug it up to let it charge. So, um, oops, oh, I keep forgetting to turn this light on. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, do several, several light coats of this on here. And I'm going to be drying it in between each coat. And also, I did not seal this, uh, the alcohol ink at all. I, before I uh, turned on the camera, I got out a different painting that I had and just sprayed a little, I don't know, about three layers or so on it because I wanted to see if it was going to reactivate the inks. I didn't think that it would because this is a water-based um, ink. I guess they're calling it an ink. Um, and because it's water-based, I didn't think it would hurt the inks, but you just never know because some of the other chemicals in it. So all you need to do to dry it is just, I'm using this on the cool setting. Uh, I think I mentioned that before when I was doing one. I didn't want to use it on the heat setting just because I wasn't sure if it would damage the inks to get too hot. But for sure on this, I don't want to do it on hot because this is not, you know, sturdy enough to hold up to that kind of heat to be drying it a whole lot it would definitely end up warping. And so far, I mean, I know I've only done, you know, the one thing, one pass over it, but it's not, uh, not messing up the look of it any to me anyway. Let's get another one. It's one thing, it's a little hard to tell where I have been over it with this. It's because it's not black and because this is just a little bit shiny, I guess. I don't know, but it's really difficult for me to tell um, where I've already been. So I'm hoping I don't end up with it really mottled looking. You never know. Every now and then, I'll kind of get one spot a little bit heavier just to make sure that the airbrush is still spraying. Get around the edges good, too, because I'm kind of afraid I'm missing them a little bit. That's going to be the trickiest thing with this, I think, is just making sure that I have full coverage on this. And what purpose this would serve, I just don't really know. Um, you know, if you had it, a painting that was done with this hanging somewhere in your house where it got some different temperatures, different times of the day, it would probably be pretty cool. I don't know about putting it in direct sunlight. I think that's probably not a good idea 
for the alcohol inks or for the for this ink and if you resin over it you know it's just kind of like asking for your resin to yellow to me if you set it in the sunlight where it's going to get a lot of direct sunlight all the time well, i hope i got that everywhere thing kills my finger that's the arthritis in my hands that one finger is pretty bad <laughs> hard to hold that down. And once again, I'm just doing it on the cool setting. This dries really quickly unless it's just put on really heavy. So, um, I don't think I need anything more than the cool setting on it. Right now, the only, the difference I can tell is this is not as shiny as it was, which is fine because I'm going to resin over it anyway. Uh, but that is something to keep in mind as you're putting on the liquid crystal, if you decide to do one like this, uh, you are going to lose a lot of that sheen that you get automatically with the alcohol inks. This may end up being a two or three day project to get this stuff on there. Not sure my finger can take too many hours of doing this. So I'm trying to get a little bit heavier coat on there this time than what I was. What I may end up doing, too, after I get, um, you know, these few coats over everything, is I may go back and just try to, to get it heavier in the darkest areas, or at least in the areas where the brass is not, so that I don't continue to cover up the brass too, too much where it'll keep some shine on it pretty good. In fact, I'll do a little of that right now. Because where it's gonna show up the best anyway is in the darkest areas. And so, uh, I think that, you know, that if you wanna concentrate on those areas, that that would probably be a good idea, but I would you know, do like I've done and kind of go over the whole thing at least a few times before you start, you know, laying it in there heavier in specific spots. Oh. Gotta be an easier way to do that. Mm. I feel like I'm starting to see some hints of color change in just a spot or two now. Um, I mean, you're supposed to put on like eight to ten coats of this stuff. So, don't be surprised if you don't see color change for a little bit. But I am seeing just a tiny bit here and there. I think where I put it on a little heavier at that time, it's kind of helping some. All 
right, so I won't make you all keep on watching me put these layers on. Um, I'll just continue building up a little bit and then I'll uh, um, come back to this once I get several coats on it and we'll see if it's getting much color change to it at that point. Okay, I've got about, I, I've lost count, but I'm thinking somewhere around six or seven coats on this now. And I can see some color change in it just when I spray um, the airbrush, which my battery is just about dead. That could be why I'm having a little trouble. It's just not spraying real good at the moment. Um, so uh, before I stop for the night, I did want to show you all. I'm going to just spray it. Uh, let me see. I'm going to see if I can get this up. Oop closer to you all while I do it. And maybe you can see, you know, I'm about to stop spraying. About had it. Um, well, I was hoping you would be able to see the color change. So I don't know if you can or not. Now you're not gonna get that really dramatic color change that you get. Let me try this. I don't know if this will work while it's plugged in or not, but let's see. But you're not going to get that really dramatic color change that you get on something that's black. Yeah, that didn't help much. Um, but you can still see it. And what is really cool is the color change that I can see. It's like the same shades that are on the painting. It's changing to purples and blues and greens, teal, you know. I haven't seen any of the orange and yellow that shows up on black. Oh, I mean, it, it may show up in there a little bit, but for the most part, it has been, I can't even tell if this is spraying right now, but for the most part, it's been colors you know, that are on the painting. Now, it has lost pretty much all of its sheen now. It's gone to just very matte looking. Uh, but I think that that will be just fine. Let me dry. You can see a, a few little spots there where it's, uh, and did you see how that did? I hope you all could see that how, as I put the dryer on it, now some of it's changing and darkening back up. Wow. Okay, I'm going to put a little heat on it and see if you can tell a difference now. Let's see if the heat. Now, can you see that? You see the little wave going across there? Put it back on cool. That was high heat. I don't know that I can get it to change fast enough with the cool for you all to see it. See, I can see color change down in here. I can, <laughs> I can see where my finger is underneath the painting. It's giving it a different, a warmer. <laughs> color change because my fingers under it there. So but anyway, I still need to get a few more coats on, but um, I'm going to have to empty this and charge it for tonight because it's pretty much petering out on me. But did want to uh, just to let you all see where it's at right now. I don't know if I can there's enough on it to be able to tell a difference with my hand right now or not. Let's see. Oh yeah, I can see my fingerprints in there a little bit. So, and once I get a few more coats on, <clears throat> it should uh, be even a little more pronounced. Doesn't seem to really be changing much. Oh, oh well, there, it did that time. Um, I was gonna say on the, that uh, plum color, but it did change that time there. 
So we'll see, we'll get the rest of it on and I will probably just put um, a light coat of uh, the Rust-Oleum uh, Crystal Clear Enamel that I have to protect it while I um, am getting it mounted onto a, a wooden board. But I will be back um, as soon as I get a chance to finish working on this at some point tomorrow, I hope. And I'll be back to let you all see what it looks like. Okay, I got this all done. Got several um, coats of the, yep, liquid crystal. I don't know why I can't ever remember the name of that. So anyway, I got several coats on it. Um, you know, let it dry. I put just a couple of light coats of Rust-Oleum, uh, like clear, crystal clear enamel over it. So I wanted to show you all what it does now. I'm hoping I can get this to work good. Look at that. I, I wish that I could do a time lapse of this. Um, I could put it somewhere in the sun because it's really, really cool. So this is on cool, just kind of cooling it back down a little bit. I put it back on heat that I hope you all can see just how really awesome that works. Got to get that farther away to try and pull it back down a little. warming up a little bit but I think you all can see the kind of color change that it's getting I hope you can could hear me over that dryer but anyway it is really awesome I, I this is going in my house somewhere I'll have to find somewhere like over a heat vent or something where I can lay it my hands are kind of cold I don't know if I can get it to change good with my hands right now yeah I didn't think so but um, when my hands are not freezing cold, <laughs> I can get it to, uh, I can leave a handprint on it. You can kind of see a little bit there where it did it. But this, I had the best time with this. Now, it did, um, you know, dull the brass down. But when I put the uh, enamel, the clear enamel over top of it, it kind of shined it back up again a little bit. It's not quite as shiny as it would be otherwise, but it's good enough. And uh, like I said, I am going to resin this. I'm going to mount it on a, a round wooden board and resin it. And I'll show you all that step too. But I did want to go ahead and show you this. You can see how it's slowly now changing back colors again as the temperature changes. I wish that I had better light to where you all could see it a little bit better. But it is really, really cool. I'm just, this stuff, it's just, has not ceased to amaze me no matter what I've done, uh, what I've sprayed it on. So, all right, well, there you go. We know it works with alcohol ink. It won't reactivate the ink. Um, so next step will be getting it mounted on the board and resining it. And I will be back to do that, um, very shortly for you all, but probably tomorrow for me. <laughs> so I'll see you all in just a second. All right. I am ready to go ahead and put the, um, painting on the wooden round. I debated on even putting this in because I know you all have seen me do this before, but I also know that there are a lot of you who are new and just in case you haven't done this or seen it done before, I'll just go ahead and show it on here. And those of you who know, you can just fast forward through this part. Um, I'm using the Liquitex gel medium for this. This is gloss gel. It obviously doesn't have to be gloss because it's going to be hidden, but this is what I have already, and it works great for a glue type thing to stick these things down. 
Um, and that's probably way too much. So anyway, just spread it on there. Oh, and I did put a light coat of stain on this um, board. Uh, I wanted to keep the wood light colored, but it was, with the unfinished, it was just lighter than what I wanted it to be. So I did go ahead and just used a little bit of a pine colored stain on it. Give it a little more finished look in case it shows around the side, the edges any, um, anywhere that, you know, the painting doesn't come all the way to the edge, and plus, that helps on the edges as well. So you don't need a lot, just a thin coat of that on there. Let me get my lid on good. And then, mm -hmm. put this over, make sure you get it centered good, because it is rare that you're going to have an exact fit on this where your board and your whatever you know paper your paintings on are going to be just a dead exact match that right there is about as close as it ever gets then this is parchment paper just don't use wax paper just so you don't get wax on your painting but you can use just pretty much anything else but I like parchment paper because I know it won't stick to it. And then this is just a brayer. And you don't have to use one of these. I went for a long time and did not have one. But it certainly does help a little bit if you have one. Just to get it all pressed down. Make sure there's no air bubbles. Make sure there's no lumps of um, whatever you use to stick your painting down with. You can use Mod Podge as well. I've done that at times. I just feel like the um, the Liquitex gel medium, I, maybe it, it's probably just me, I just feel like it sticks down better. So there we go. Now that is all stuck down. You all can see, look at the color change in it, just from me messing with it. You all can see that. Um, Check your edges, you know, make sure you didn't have any gobs come out anywhere. Because you don't want to let it dry on there and have a big thick patch of something on it. I'm just going around the edges there making sure that it's stuck down good. I'm playing with it for a second just because it's fun. See? <laughs> Alright, so then... I'll put my parchment paper back over it. I am turn. I flipped it over because I do have a little bit of gel medium there. And then you just want to weight it down. These are just some old boards that I have here that I put under stuff sometimes to paint, as you can see. And there you go. You can use more weight than that. That's usually sufficient. Um, you know, it's entirely up to you if you think you need more weight than that all right so now i'm just going to let that dry and then the next step will be resining and i'll be back to show you all that once this gets dry okay i'm finally ready to do the resin on this and while i've got the resin out i'm going to also resin this flame one that i did on the black nora um i'm using ooh, if i can get the jug over there art resin today I've got and as you can see this is my hardener and it has yellowed that is because my resin is out of date it's still usable but uh, it is out of date and your hardener will start to yellow uh, you know as, as it gets a little older so it won't hurt anything other than you might not want to put it on top of a white background but for these two, since they were so dark, you know, it, I figured it would be fine. And this one, you can tell I've got it really super warm in here uh, because of the, you know, working with the resin. But how cool is that? I hope y'all can see that good. Ugh, excuse me. No, it's itching. Put my little handprint on there. Uh, this thing is just super cool. Um, all I did was 
taped up around the back to keep that, you know, the resin drips. And now that I've moved it, I hope that it's ready to go. Um, they're still level. These are, in case you don't recognize them, the little things that come in pizza boxes. They're super handy for doing stuff like this. Uh, I can't, I really hope that's still level because I can't check. I, I've lost my level, couldn't find it at all today. So, I uh, yeah. had to use my phone as the level, which I'm really hoping is right. These are just some little cups that I got off of Amazon. Um, they'll wash out with alcohol. Now, normally I would wear my respirator while doing this, but I'm not today because I'm just going to do these two little quick ones and I wanted to be able uh, for you all to understand me while I was doing it. If I were doing anything more going to be working with the resin any longer than what I am, then I would definitely wear my respirator and would highly recommend that you all do the same. This is just a little resin stirring stick or silicone stirring stick. Um, this came from Let's Resin uh, from their stuff on Amazon. So I'm just gonna I really, you all really wouldn't have to watch me do this part, but uh, I frequently have questions about how I resin my paintings. And so I'm just showing you with the art resin, it is a, um, you know, equal measurements of hardener and resin mixed together. Uh, you need to mix it for about three to five minutes. Uh, I put mine in a warm, a warm water bath first, and I generally use very warm water, not like hot, but very warm because that will make it a little more liquid, not quite as thick, and it will uh, help some of the bubbles pop a little bit better. So you just pour your two parts together you know, stir it for about three to five minutes. Uh, and then you can, some people will set it aside, let it sit for a minute. You wanna be sure that you're frequently scraping the sides of your cup, the sides, the bottom of your cup. I frequently do this with my little stirrer. You don't have to have a silicone stirrer. Um, you can use the, like the craft sticks, especially the wider ones. Um, I have heard, I don't know, because this is the first time I've actually used this, but I've heard that the silicone stirrers help keep some of the air bubbles out of your resin. So, uh, and I don't, I don't know, but I mean, it kind of makes sense because the wood stirring sticks do, I mean, they're not completely solid. They are going to have, they are porous, so they're going to have some little air bubbles coming out of them. So now this, I'm gonna keep stirring as you can see, I hope. It's kind of milky looking still, a um, little bit marbly looking. You don't want that. You want it to be completely crystal clear. And for me personally, once mine is clear, I still keep on stirring it for another minute or two after that. Uh, just to be on the safe side, you know, it's because if you don't get your resin mixed good, you can end up, you will end up with um, sticky spots, soft spots in your resin that won't dry good or at all. And then you have to go back and try to scrape those out and sand things down some and re-pour your resin over top of it. Now, one thing that I had not shown you all is on the fire painting, I wish it wasn't so warm in here so you could see what it looks like when it's black, but I'm sweating up a storm right now because I've got the heat up. The resin just will do a little better when it's warm. Um, so I just get this over. Got a little sticky on my gloves, wanted to be careful. Now, this was a part that that is black 
but in talk, I talked to my grandson, who, yes, definitely wants that, and so I decided to put some of the liquid crystal on it as well. I'll show you real quickly here. So look at that. How cool is that now? So I only put it at the top, you know, going down into the flames a little bit and it just kind of made it look more like fire and was just really super cool. So um, I think he'll be really happy with that. So that's the other painting that I'm going to resin today. And now this is getting, it's nice and clear now. I, I hope you can see it. I can't tell because there's so much stuff behind and underneath and it's clear. Um, it is nice and clear. It's got quite a few bubbles in it. And when, once I pour it on, you know, I'll, I'm probably going to just use my hair dryer for this. I do have a heat gun that I will use to resin, but since both of these have the liquid crystal on them, I don't want to damage that by getting it too hot. So I'm just going to probably use my hair dryer and hope to pop some bubbles. Now, one thing, this is another thing I haven't tried because I just recently heard this, um, is that you can actually mist alcohol, um, just isopropyl alcohol. Ouch, sorry, I've got two pairs of gloves on and they're squeezing my ring sideways. Um, just mist isopropyl alcohol lightly over whatever you're doing with resin and that will pop the bubbles. But I can't find my little mister bottle, which I believe might have gone the way of many of my supplies. They managed to walk off with the little tweeners around here who love to do their own arts and crafts, but they have a really bad habit of not bringing me back my supplies when they're using them. So, and I actually had to go hunting my Posca pen that I used to sign my paintings with um, to put my name on that earlier today so I could get my name on it before I uh, resined it. Um, as far as signing the paintings goes, um, sometimes I sign the front, sometimes, uh, actually pretty much all, I'll always sign the back, I just haven't done this yet, I'll sign the back and put the date that it was made on the back, oh, at least the month and the year. Um, for ones like these, where it really, I mean, it's going to be hung a certain way, pretty much. This one's got to be hung a certain way. This one, it doesn't matter which way you turn it, it looks pretty much the same. Some of the paintings are not like that. And so, I sometimes do not sign the front unless the buyer wants me to simply because I want to give them the option of where, how they want to hang it. Some people think that, you know, certain ones look better turned one way, some think it looks better turned the other way. Um, and that way, I, you know, they have that option. And I will, you know, try to remember to ask people if they want me to sign the front and to let me know which way they're planning on turning the painting so that I can sign it in an appropriate spot and not have the the signature, you know, upside down where it looks like they hung the painting upside down. Mercy, I am sweating so bad. I'm going to have sweat running in my eyes under my glasses. Um, all right, well, this is still really bubbly, but because I did a warm water bath on it, I don't have quite the working time that I would normally. I think it's 45 minutes, I think, for um, the art resin. Um, I'm guessing I probably have about 30 with this just because it's already warm. And the warmer it is, the less working time you have with it. Because it is like a thermogenic reaction. I think that's the word. Um, that will set it up. It's actually going to get hot. Oh, God. I'm sorry, I should have 
dug this out before I started. I just happened to remember my torch, which I may use. Yeah. I was going to say, which hopefully will actually work. I think I have gas in it. <laughs> this is my my really sad looking, well used butane torch. Pick these up in just about any hardware store. <laughs> or on Amazon for that matter. Doesn't matter what brand you get or anything of that. Alright, move this back over. So I don't want to drip on it while I'm putting some on this. Now look at the color change just from pouring the resin on. How cool is that? I know y'all get tired of hearing me say that, but it just really, really is. It's just too awesome. This liquid crystal has been so much fun to play with. Uh, I have just had the best time messing around with this. I would just happily turn everything in my house, all those rainbow colors if I could. It's like this, I, I already mentioned once, I'm definitely keeping this one because I just absolutely love it. It's got one of my favorite color blends on it. And then the liquid crystal just really brings it out to me. I just think it's fantastic. All right, so I normally get my hands all in here and I'm probably going to in just a second. Just kind of spreading that out a little first. Give some of those bubbles a chance to pop on their own, hopefully, before I start heating on it. Um, but I just do better when I do it with my hands. And I actually got this a little thicker than I meant because I want it thin on this just to make sure that I don't, uh, I don't want it to be too thick so that the temperature change can't get through to the liquid crystal. I did want a little bit of the resin around the edge. That's the reason I'm doing this. You do not have to do this. That was just my choice. Uh, some people actually will tape it or like this and dam it up. But I definitely did not want to do that with this because I do, you know, I don't want that thick layer on there. I'm going to probably rake some of this off. I, you know, you don't want to get it too thin either because then it makes it really easy to get um, little places where your resin might pull back. That's one of those things you kind of have to watch for. Uh, when you're doing something like this that's already been sealed, because sometimes the resin does not want to stick to that sealant. You can see, I think you can see how I'm sort of just rubbing that, dripping it off the edges, because I do want that protective coat and shine of the resin, but I don't want it so thick that I can't uh, make it change color. I may paint it somewhere where I get some you know, heat going on it every now and then where it might change colors more often on its own. So this right here is pretty much what it will look like when it is not um, color changed. Sorry, I was trying to tell if that was a uh, yeah, air bubble. I was trying to tell if that was an air bubble or something in it. I put on two pairs of gloves so that if I need to, I can strip one off and still have another pair on. But um, my little torch here 
And yeah, I'm not too worried about the heat from the torch hurting it much because as you can see, I just barely got any color change. I'm, you know, trying to do it very quickly so that uh, it doesn't, well, so it doesn't scorch the resin, but also so it doesn't overheat the painting underneath. I'm trying to be really cautious about that. I think I've got something in my resin there in one spot because it's, I just, whatever it is, I can't. Doesn't seem like a bubble because it's not popping. But I also can't see anything, so I have no idea what it could be. I'm just trying to tip this a little just to get that resin maybe flowing back in that spot just a touch. And this is just the little thing that you all have seen me use on my paintings before. Which I'm hopefully not going to regret getting resin all over, but it was laying there. It was handy. I have tweezers and things, and I just for whatever reason, forgot to get them out. Alright, I cannot figure that out. That will not move back into that spot. If you have, and this is probably what I should have just done to start with, but if you have a little dimple like that, you can always take and just put a tiny little drop of resin in it. Mm -hmm. Try to get this from all the angles there. Make sure I don't have any more. Watch your edges real close. That tends to be one of the biggest spots for me that things want to kind of pull back a little at the edge. So just watch that. Oh, mercy. That flamed up. Alright. Now I'm going to set this one aside. Where it will hopefully be somewhat level. I tried to make sure everything was as level as I could get it on my table. But when you start shuffling things around... And you just don't ever know when you set something back down it might or might not be level and obviously I don't want to lay my phone on it right now even if I could sorry I, I'm I know this little section right here may run a little bit long but you know, there's no point in doing it if I'm not going to try to do it right. So, I was looking very carefully, trying to make sure. Yep, see, I see a little fuzz in there right now. Well, I can find it again. Something like this is really handy, too, for if you see a little air bubble. Oh, I just realized I'm out of camera range. Something like this. <laughs> It's really handy if you see a little air bubble or a piece of fuzz. You can just kind of scoop it up with it. With the little tip on it. And I saw a piece of fuzz, but I can't tell if I got it or not. Hopefully I did. Okay. I think that's got that. And this one... I just use push pins on the back side, which is another thing that's really handy because if you don't have 
a really good level surface, you can adjust your push pins um, up and down. Sorry, I was looked like it was kind of all going one direction there on that other one, so I was moving it. But anyway, you can adjust your push pins one at a time and level your painting up, even if your um, your table or whatever you're working on is not level. Now, I think I did do a little too much resin here because I wasn't thinking about just how thin I really wanted it to be on this. y'all can see this where it's the resin temperature is changing the color on it there now this like I'd said before this right here is black when it's not extremely warm like it is right now it's, it's probably about I don't know what 74 75 in here right now which to me is just a little too warm but the resin will, you know, cooperate a little better if it's nice and warm. Oh, man. Dang it. Okay, so I forgot to sign this one. Um, all right, well, hopefully Brennan won't mind. I'll sign it on the back. I mean, I can actually sign it over top of the resin, but I don't like to do that. I do like to... Hmm. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see here. Sorry, I was trying to find my pen. And for those of you who are wondering what you can use to sign them, uh, this is just a little Posca pen. This one's gold. Because um, I want it to show up, but I don't want it to be like, super bright, so... It's not going to show up anyway. All right. All right. Well, sorry, Brennan. I'll sign this one on the back for you. You know I will anyway. Write you a little note back there. I'm hoping that dries before I get over there with the resin. So I don't want to rub it right off. Trying to wait for that corner last just to give it time to to dry just a touch. Better idea if you're gonna sign them, sign them you know well before you resin them so they have plenty of time to dry good. Not sign them right as you're pouring resin on the painting. Now this one, I did get the resin much thinner on there, so I'm not gonna have to worry about rubbing a bunch of it off on this one. But then, like I said, it, it's, you know, it, when you get it on there really super thin, you do have to watch really closely about getting a lot of dimples and places where your resin may pull back from the paint some. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I get it spread on all the edges. I'm sorry for making you all watch this. Um, I could have turned this part on off and as I ended up taking off my gloves anyway, I would have been able to touch the button to turn it off. So you wouldn't have to watch this one. So you can just relax and watch the cool color change up there instead. So now you know that this liquid crystal ink will work with alcohol ink. Like on the round one, you know, put right over top of it. On this one, it's worked in to where it is not on the alcohol ink and on the alcohol ink. So, uh, 
you know, if you decide to get some to play around with, gives you some ideas of some things you might be able to do. Uh, do not try to mix it with your wet inks. Uh, I have not done that because uh, liquid um, uh, solar color dust uh, recommends that you not mix the liquid crystal with any other medium other than uh, some of it can be mixed with distilled water um, some of it, it says not to mix it with anything at all. And then there, they have some sort of medium on their website that I think you might be able to mix it with a little bit. Can't remember, but um, I'm, I'm I don't want to mess around with it, experimenting too much because it is just unbelievably expensive, and I don't want to end up, you know, wasting a bunch of it or messing it up. Not that it would take a whole bunch to experiment, but still, you know, when you pay $30 for a bottle of something, you really want to be careful with it. Some of these, I still can't tell if they're bubbles or fuzzes. I need a glasses update badly. Um, now, as far as the respirator goes, yes, I highly recommend using a respirator while you're doing this. It's, you know, like I said, this is not something I would normally do without a respirator, which is why you all don't see me work with resin much. But I'm doing very little heating, for one thing. And to me, that is the most dangerous part of it, is when you're heating it, you're releasing a lot more chemicals into the air and I'm just, I'm not doing much heating of it at all. And I could be completely wrong about that, but it seems to me like that is going to be the most dangerous time is when you're heating it. Now, if you're doing a, a full resin painting, uh, you definitely 100% want to wear a respirator. Now, Art Resin says that their product is uh, VOC free, you know, it's going to be safe to use, blah, blah, and all that. But even they recommend using appropriate protective gear. <laughs> so, um, the, the VOCs are the the vapors, the organic compound vapors that come off of it. So if you get a respirator, make sure you get one that has or get filters for it <coughs> that are rated <coughs> for that, for protection from vapors, organic vapors. I really hope y'all can see the color in this. I just think it's pretty amazing. All right, so, all right. I am going to just be, you know, kind of popping air bubbles and checking for little fuzzes like that one. Obviously I need to dust my house. Um, but that's all that I will be doing now for the next little bit, so I will not make you all hang around and watch that. I will let you go, and uh, once I will be covering them up, once I'm sure I've got all the air bubbles and the fuzz out of them, I, I do have just um, a tote that I'm gonna lay down over top of them. 
to keep them protected while they dry to keep any more fuzzes or whatever bugs or anything that happens to be around keep that from getting in them so uh, I will be back to show you all the finished product once it's all done all right I'll be back soon all right I am back with the finished resin um, I'm gonna have to go over these again I did get a couple of little dimples uh, that I'm gonna have to kind of sand out and re-resin just a little bit uh all right so this is the one that this video has mostly been about with the resin on it hopefully you're not getting so much reflection that you can't even see the colors and things on it uh it's this is fairly what it will be although just the heat from my hand i've noticed it started changing a little bit from underneath, just the heat where my hand is underneath it. And there you can see we still got plenty of good color change there. Put a little heat on the, with the dryer. can see the you know, the color changes that it's going through there and it will you know it'll very slowly change back to its its natural state as long as it's not kept you know super warm if I have it sitting in front of a, a heat vent or something it'll stay changed while the the heat is on it uh, and then it will Oh, sorry, <laughs> my ankle is itching. Um, it'll go back to its original state eventually as it as it cools down. So um, this is still pretty warm. It will this will be slowly changing color over the next little bit as it cools back down. Sorry, I was trying to set this back up. You can see I made a mess. I was really glad I decided to go ahead and. Uh, and uncover these this morning before I turned on the video because I just wasn't thinking and where I had raked off so much of the resin off of this round one, you know, I had it in puddles. And then I set the flame painting down in the puddles. So I just, I had ripped paper and had a terrible time getting that off. So, but let me show you how oh. <laughs> this is what happens when you set it in your resin. But this is the plain one. This is the one that's got the most issues. I only had one tiny little dimple on the other one, but this one uh, I have several. So, And you can see on this one, you can see just where I picked it up right there. Um, we're still getting good color change. My hands are freezing. I'm sorry, you can barely see my little fingerprints there, so let me just do this instead. But the resin has not stopped the color change, even just with the warmth from my hands. I hope y'all can see that good. I love just putting heat on this, enough heat on this that you can really, you know, that you can really, really see the color change. It, it, it's just so awesome. I mean, what would be really awesome is to be able to do a landscape with this and have this like Aurora Borealis in the sky, but there's no way to, you know, keep it constantly going. But that's what would be super cool to me is to have it just constantly color changing in the sky. Uh, but I'm really happy 
with how this works with the alcohol in this. I'll try to cool it back down just a little bit there. You can see, I mean, it's just massively cool. I am just in love with this uh, liquid crystal from the Solar Color Dust. Um, we'll definitely be getting some more and doing a few other things with it, um, especially now that I know that I can use it on top of my alcohol ink paintings. That was my big concern was whether or not I would be able to uh, see the color change or even, you know, not damage the, the alcohol inks when I put the solar color dust on it. And as you can see, my empty bottle here, but this is at solarcolordust.com is where it came from. And this is called Liquid Crystal. And they do have several different forms of it. Um, I highly, if you have an airbrush, I don't even have mine here to show you, but my little, you saw me use it, the little um, like cordless airbrush. Definitely, definitely get the low PSI version of the liquid crystal. Uh, mine, I, I had some low PSI version and I had a bottle of the concentrated spray. If you have um, a higher powered air brush, mine was not high powered enough. It's supposed to go up to 25 PSI, but that was not enough for the concentrated sprayable version. So if yours is anything, you know, 25 PSI or less, definitely get the low PSI. You're going to have to put on more coats of it, but it, you're going to end up with the exact same brightness in the end. You just have to put on more coats of the liquid crystal. And I, yeah, I'm just going to knock everything over. I wanted to scoot this flame one back in because I wanted to show you all put it down there. how it's still, it's slowly changing, you know, back to black. I know you all couldn't see it earlier. It This top part was back to just solid black this morning when I first checked on it. But then when I turned the heat up a little this morning, it started getting a little tint to it. But you can see how it's just slowly, maybe you can see not too much reflection. Um, it's slowly working its way back to to through the spectrum that it does go through. <clears throat> and... Uh, you know, it'll, it'll get back to, well, the liquid crystal is not black. Uh, I know I've explained this before, but with the way I've been talking I've, right now, I've made it sound like it is. It is transparent. Um, now, if you get it on in too many layers, you can kind of see it. It does have a little bit of a, a very light tan, a translucent sort of tan color to it. Uh, if you really pile it on there thick. But for the most part, it's translucent. And whatever color you have underneath is what color it will be, uh, well, that's what color you'll see when there is no color change effect going on. So, uh, I was turning that one that way, so while you're all listening to me jabber, you can at least see it where it's, changing its colors back again. Um, but anyway, so um, if you're using it, make sure you use dark colors under it and you want light coats of it. You just want multiple thin coats. The airbrush, you know, I've tried it with a paintbrush and it works okay, but it does tend to leave brush marks. So the airbrush for me was the best option. And I, you know, I did light coat over everything, dried it with my hair dryer, then, you know, another light coat, dry it with the hair dryer, on and on and on. 
th that to me is the best way to do it. If you want fairly smooth, even coverage, that's, that seems to be the best way. Uh, and, and that way, if whatever you're putting it on has something on it that's going to sort of repel the ink, which can happen and did happen to me on some things when I was playing around with it, um, a paintbrush, you're gonna get more of that repelling effect than you will with the airbrush because you're gonna get that super thin layer <clears throat> on there. Excuse me. <coughs> My throat is dry this morning. Um, and that gives it something to sort of grip to. It's less likely to keep on repelling with those super light coats. And you'll be able to get better even coverage that way. So that is my alcohol ink and liquid crystal from Solar Color Dust experiment for now. Um, I say for now, there will be more coming because I love this stuff. I, I really do. It is so much fun to play with. And one good thing about, I still don't know how long, like a year, two years, I don't know how long the color change effect will last. But if you're doing it over something like this, or even this, when the color change effect eventually wears out or whatever stops working, you've still got the painting underneath it. So, you know, put it on things that you like and, uh, you know, you're still going to have the, the painting even once the color change effect is gone. And I will try to find out uh, if they even know <clears throat> how much time, you know, generally this, the color change effect will last and what affects it, what can shorten its lifespan, you know, if there's anything that can help it last longer. So, all right. Well, I really hope that you all enjoyed this. I know this turned out to be really long. Uh, there were just so many steps that I was showing you all that, that it did turn out to be a rather long video. Um, about two weeks worth for me, but <laughs> at least you all didn't have to watch that. Uh, didn't have to watch that live and be stuck there for two weeks watching me try and get through this. So, all right. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed it. I love every one of you. Thank you all so much for watching, for liking and subscribing to my videos. Um, I, I really, really do appreciate it. And I will be back with y'all with something else just as soon as I can. Bye, everyone.